learners, in first part, you have learned about how macroeconomics was born and what are the differences between microeconomics and macroeconomics. And also, you learned about the Indian traditional heritage. Learners, in this part, you will learn the simple characteristics of macroeconomics. These are first, who are the macroeconomic decision makers or players? Second, what do the macroeconomic decision makers try to do? Learners, you might have heard about fiscal policy and monetary policy. You might have also heard about taxation and relief package etcetera by government and repo rate and bank rate etcetera by Reserve Bank of India. These macroeconomic policies are pursued by the state itself or statutory bodies like the RBI, Securities and Exchange Board of India and similar institutions. Typically, each such body will have one or more public goals to pursue as defined by law or by the constitution of India. These goals are not those of individual economic agents maximizing their private profit or welfare. The macroeconomic agents are basically different from the individual decision makers. Learners, secondly, what do the macroeconomic decision makers try to do? They have to go beyond economic objectives and try to direct the deployment of economic resources for public needs. Such activities are not aimed at serving individual self-interest. They are pursued by the government for the welfare of the country and its people as a whole. Learners, I would like to bring here that the discussion about COVID-19 pandemic for better understanding of the characteristics of macroeconomics. You are aware about COVID-19 pandemic and its impact on world economy as well as on Indian economy. It is affecting all people of the world and the macroeconomic indicators such as output of goods and services, unemployment rate and what steps can the government take in order to improve the state of economy are broad economic questions that concern all citizens. Learners, you have studied about these indicators like GDP, unemployment and challenge of poverty in your previous classes. You may recall that GDP is the value of final goods and services produced within a country during a particular year. GDP shows how big the economy is. GDP is a vital economic parameter both as an indication of the capacity of the economy as also its efficiency. It is an important indicator of economy to know the total output of economy. Learners, here I want to share with you that GDP can be misleading indicator of economic progress in some situations. For example, natural disasters tend to enhance GDP. Disasters like floods, earthquake and drought etc lead to temporary fail in the productivity of affected population which depresses GDP. But government expenditure for recovering from the disaster enhances GDP to an even greater extent. Such expenditure is for restoration than the economic progress. Finally, we have noted that it may be incorrect to treat GDP as an index of the welfare of the country. Learners, details about GDP you will study in next chapter national income accounting. In the next chapter, you will be introduced the fundamental functioning of an economy in detail. You will learn 
how you can view the aggregate income of the entire economy going through the sectors of the economy in a circular way along with three ways to calculate the national income namely product method, expenditure method and income method. Learners, we move to the next indicator of economy that is unemployment. You may recall that unemployment rate may be defined as the number of people who are not working and are looking for jobs divided by the total number of people who are working or looking for jobs. Learners, you can see in the slide India's business hit by COVID-19 March 2020 contraction in output in percentage that India's industrial activity as represented by index of industrial production IIP contracted by a record 16.7 percent in March 2020 just when the country had entered a strict lockdown. Consumer durables which were already struggling due to the slowdown in the economy declined by a massive 33 percent indicating that urban demand had suffered the most. Private consumption has been the hardest hit. Capital goods growth, a marker of investment in the economy, contracted the most falling by 35 percent. Learners, reviving manufacturing has been one of the biggest challenge. Weak manufacturing growth decreased India's export potential leading to lower employment generation. The pain in the manufacturing sector was visible all through the last fiscal year. Manufacturing growth contracted by 0.2 percent in the October-December 2019 period pulling down the gross domestic product to 4.7 percent the lowest in 27 quarters. Manufacturing was already struggling but the COVID-19 pandemic brought it to a standstill. A disaggregation of the IIP data for March 2020 will show that manufacturing sank by a staggering 20 percent. Learners, it is clear from the slide, eight core sectors output in percentage taken from the Economic Times online that the key infrastructure industries showed a decline of 6.7 percent in March 2020. Coal, crude oil, natural gas, petroleum refinery products, fertilizer, cement, steel and electricity generation. These are the eight core sectors of Indian economy. These eight industries comprise more than 40 percent of the weight of the items included in the index of industrial production. The index was pulled down by a broad based contraction witnessed in seven out of the eight core sectors of the economy. Learners, the biggest fall was seen in cement output as it slumped by a massive 25 percent reflecting how severely the construction activity has been impacted. Natural gas output fell 15 percent followed by steel output declining 13 percent and electricity by 7 percent. Learners, exports, a key in the global supply chain showed some of the unwelcoming signs February 2020 onwards. The general contraction in the economic activity throughout the world as a fallout of the coronavirus pandemic is expected to have a toll on both India's exports and imports. Exports are expected to contract by 16 percent at 265 US dollar billion 
resulting in an output loss of 50 US dollar billion as reported in Economic Times. But imports are expected to fall by 25 percent at 350 US dollar billion thanks to falling crude prices. Learners, crude alone accounts for over 20 percent of India's merchandise imports. Indian merchandise exports slumped by 60 percent in April, lowest in 25 years, reflecting the somber sentiment globally amid widespread lockdowns and cancellation of orders. In March 2020, the exports had fallen by 34.5 percent. Learners, a recent report by global trade body United Nations Conference on Trade and Development UNCTAD estimate that economic impact of COVID-19 would lead to downward revision of earnings of top multinational firms, which in turn could lower foreign direct investment by 30 to 40 percent in financial year 2021. Learners, the World Trade Organization WTO has projected that world trade could fall between 13 percent and 32 percent in 2020. A recovery in exports depends on how quickly some of the advanced economies and major export markets come out of the clutches of the pandemic. Learners, you can see the diagram quarterly GDP growth and expansion forecast year on year basis in percentage reported in leading newspaper. GDP growth rate in quarter 1 of financial year 2018-19 was 7.1 percent. It came down to 4.7 percent in quarter 3 of financial year 2019-20. Expansion forecast for quarter 4 of financial year 2019-20 by different agencies is also shown. As per Government of India, GDP growth rate decreases from 7.1 percent in quarter 1 of financial year 2018-19 to 3 percent in the quarter 4 of financial year 2019-20. Learners, according to the Reserve Bank of India, Governor Shakti Kant Das, GDP growth in 2021 is expected to remain in the negative territory with some pickup in growth impulses in the second half of 2021 onwards, as reported in May 2020 in Economic Outlook. The global economy is heading into recession. Domestic economic activity has been impacted severely by the two-month lockdown. The indicators point to collapse in demand and there is a plung in demand for electricity and petroleum products. The biggest blow is to private consumption that accounts for 60 percent domestic demand. The combined impact of demand compression and supply disruption depress economic activity in the first half of 2021. Learners, you can see in the diagram India unemployment rate in percentage that the unemployment scenario worsened from March 2020 onwards as the country was put under a strict lockdown. Data from private forecaster Center for Monitoring Indian Economy CMIE showed that unemployment rate fell from 8.75 percent in March to a staggering 23.5 percent in April. In the month of April alone, 122 million Indians lost their jobs. Among them, as per CMI data, 
were 27 million youth in the age group of 20 to 30 years, a dire employment scenario. Learners, a large migrating workforce from industrial centers back home poses a risk to restarting the economy. Labor participation rate has also taken a hit. With almost 90 percent of the country's workforce employed in the informal sector, the situation could be far worse as the informal economy has taken the most severe beating owing to COVID-19. Learners, it is clear from the diagram who lost employment in April 2020 taken from business standard that small traders and wage laborers have been the most severely hit during the lockdown. A massive 91 million small traders and wage laborers lost their jobs, lost their livelihoods in just about a month. This category includes hawkers and daily wage earning laborers whose livelihood depend every day on a functioning economy. An estimated 71 percent of them lost employment. Learners, larger entrepreneurs, those with fixed assets have also reported large employment losses. 23 percent of them reported loss of jobs. The large scale loss of employment among business persons is an indication that the loss during the lockdown is not limited to just jobs, but also to enterprise. It is very likely that about a quarter of all businesses have been shut for good in such a prolonged lockdown. 18 million business persons are estimated to have lost their jobs in April 2020. The average count of larger entrepreneurs was 78 million in 2019-20. This fell to 60 million in April 2020. Learners, a similar quantum of loss can be seen among the salaried employees. Their count dropped from 86 million in 2019-20 to 68 million in April 2020. Means about 18 million lost their jobs. This implies a drop of 21 percent or one in every five salaried employees seem to have lost jobs during the lockdown. Salaried jobs have not been growing. They have remained mostly in a narrow band of 80 to 90 million in the past three years. The fall to 68 million is therefore hard. Learners, the street hawker may return to her work after the lockdown. Her challenge is to survive during the lockdown. However, the challenge for the salaried employees could be to get the job that was lost during the lockdown. Salaried jobs are not easy to get. Learners, the odd man in this job loss is agriculture. The count of farmers increased in March and April 2020. The count of farmers increased by 6 million or by 5 percent in April 2020 compared to the average count of farmers in 2019-20. This is not surprising. When jobs evaporate in other sectors, people revert back to their farms which seem to have an infinite capacity to absorb labor. But unfortunately, that employment is mostly disguised unemployment. Learners, does this situation not remind us 
the great depression of 1929? Yes, it reminds us about the great depression of 1929 due to similarity of the indicators of economy like unemployment and lower output of goods and services in the economy during COVID-19 pandemic. Learners, I would like to share with you that the output and employment levels in the countries of Europe and North America fall by huge amounts. It affected other countries of the world as well. Demand for goods in the market was low. Many factories were lying idle and workers were thrown out of jobs. In USA, from 1929 to 1933, unemployment rate rose from 3% to 25%. Over the same period, aggregate output in USA fell by about 33%. Learners, these events made economists think about the functioning of the economy in a new way. Learners, the fact that the economy may have long lasting unemployment and output level low, as you learnt that it had to be theorized and explained. Keynes's book, Journal Theory of Employment, Interest and Money, published in 1936, was an attempt in this direction. Unlike his predecessors, his approach was to examine the working of the economy in its entirety and examine the interdependence of different sectors. This way, the subject of macroeconomics was born. Thank you.